Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. First station. Jesus is in agony in the Garden of Olives. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you You have have redeemed redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down upon the ground. Meditation. Jesus was in agony in the garden. Grief and anguish came over him. The sins of all mankind weighed heavily upon him. But the greater the pain, the more intense he prayed. Pain always remains a challenge for us. When in pain, we forget to pray and we break down. Some people become depressed, others despair. But if we turn to God in our sufferings, we grow spiritually, we grow stronger, and we can help others. We pray for those who suffer. The mystery of the cross has redemptive value. May all of us who undergo sufferings in this life, experience the grace and salvation that Christ brings thanks to his suffering. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, may our sufferings, all our little annoyances, humiliations, and frustrations that we undergo in daily life all those hurts and pains that come our way, may none of them go to waste. Linked with your own agony and sufferings on the cross, may our agonies that we have to endure be united for our own resurrection and the salvation of the world. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The second station. Jesus is betrayed by Judas, and Jesus restrains St. Peter from violence. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. While Jesus was still speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those who were about him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, 
shall we strike with the sword? One of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Meditation. It is one of his trusted friends that betrays Jesus. He betrays Jesus with a kiss. Jesus accepts Judas's betrayal with disappointment, but he avoids resentment and revenge. And Peter, Peter turns to the sword. Yet Jesus tells Peter that violence is not defeated by more violence. Christ models the truth of healing love. We all desperately need healing love in the world today. We are called to imitate Christ and bring his healing touch to others, especially those who are falling into bitterness and resentment. Transcend injury and insult with Christ's love. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you consider us your friends, even though we have transgressed and been unfaithful. Thank you for picking us up when we fall and we betray you. May truth and sincerity of purpose be our strength, never violence. Restrain us, O Lord, in stressful situations, just as you restrain St. Peter in his impulsive character. Keep us calm in spirit when we face opposition and unfair treatment. Convince us that a gentle answer quiets anger in our families. Give us peace. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The third station. Jesus is found guilty by the Sanhedrin. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus was silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, hereafter you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? And they answered, He deserves death. Yeah. Meditation. In every land throughout history, there have always been innocent people who have died fighting against injustice. And we see in the Gospels Jesus fighting injustice, pressing for the rights of the weak and the oppressed. Jesus' manner of struggling for justice 
is not to rouse collective anger against his opponent. This only leads to greater injustice. On the contrary, he affirms the dignity even of his opponents when they are misguided. In imitation of Christ, it's our job to also challenge our foes with the righteousness of the gospel, always evoking goodwill toward any opponent. Then injustice can be renounced through persuasion and a change of heart. Let's work to bring this teaching of nonviolence into our lives, into our world. Let us pray. Lord, quite often we judge others in haste. We are not unaware of the actual realities that people face. We're insensitive to people's feelings. Forgive us for our arrogant self-justifications. Forgive us for the irresponsible manner in which we've dealt with other people. Lord, give us the inner serenity and the self-confidence that Christ manifested in the face of unjust treatment. Keep us from an aggressive response that would go against the Holy Spirit. On the contrary, help us to bring your powerful forgiveness into all situations. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who Amen. art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The fourth station. Jesus is denied by St. Peter. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Then they seized Jesus and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. Peter followed at a distance, and when they had gathered in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a maid, seeing him as he sat in the light and gazing at him, said, This man was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, No, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, Still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man was also with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are saying. And immediately, while he was speaking, the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the words of Jesus, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. The meditation. Peter claimed to be strong, but he broke down in front of a servant girl. Often in our lives, our human weakness may take us by surprise. We collapse under pressure like Peter did. That is why Jesus asks us always to watch and pray. He urges us to remain close to him and to stay humble. Remember always that in each one of us is a rebellious self, that even when we try 
to always act right before God, we have to be honest. We fail. We must recognize and confess that we're inconsistent. Peter recognized it. And then when he met the eye of Jesus, he wept. In the light of Christ, St. Paul also reminds us to be aware of our inconsistency. As St. Paul matured and went deeper in faith, he even discovered, it's no longer I, it's no longer me, it's Christ who lives in me. Let us pray. Lord, how easily we allow a distance to grow between what we profess to be and who we really are. How often do we fail to carry out our good intentions or to fulfill our solemn promises? Even as a result, we tend to hesitate to make any permanent commitments to you, O Lord. O God, we confess that we failed. We failed to have that inner discipline we failed to really pursue a holy life. Give sturdiness to our determination now and help us to bring every good work toward its conclusion. Enable us to stand firm, to mature in the faith. We ask our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The fifth station, Jesus is judged by Pontius Pilate. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. A third time Pilate said to them, Why should I try this man? What evil has he done? I have found in him no crime deserving of death. I will therefore chastise him and release him. But they were insistent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence. He gave in to the demands of the crowd. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for. But Jesus, he delivered up to the cross. The meditation. It was not the rightness of an issue that mattered to Pontius Pilate, but it was his professional interest. Such an attitude did not help him in the case of Jesus, nor in his later career. Pilate was so unlike Jesus, whose inner resilience made him fearless. Pilate was not interested in the truth. He actually walks away from Jesus, exclaiming, what is the truth? Such indifference to truth is not uncommon in our world today. People are often concerned about what gives them immediate satisfaction. People are concerned with superficial answers. Decisions are based on personal opportunities, not on any principle of integrity. People fail to make moral, responsible, 
options, decisions. They base things based on their own interest in the moment. We pray for courage to step up to the truth, to be deliberated persons who act out of integrity. We pray that we could live according to that integrity in our lives every day. Let us pray. Lord, give us the courage to make responsible decisions. Bring, help us to bring the gospel into the reality of our everyday life. Assist us and help us to be true to our conscience and help others to do the same. Lord, you're the source of all truth. Guide us in the truth. Help us to go beyond incomplete explanations. Help us to search harder for the reality of what is true, what is good, and what is beautiful. Oh God, keep us fearless in the dark night. And when any arrow that flies by day, or we face the darkness that comes our way at night, when the sorrows of this world make us weary, enable us by the teachings of the scriptures, the word of God, to stay watchful, to be firm, to be solid in the faith. And we ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, in heaven hallowed Lord be Lord thy Lord. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The sixth station, Jesus is scourged and he's crowned with thorns. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Then Pilate, having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium, and they gathered the assembly of accusers before him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe upon him, and placing a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat upon him and took the reed and struck him on the head. The Meditation Inhumanity reaches new heights. Jesus is scourged and crowned with thorns. History is filled with hatred and war. Even today, we witness terrible acts of violence. There's hate, murder, abuse of women, abuse of children, torture, kidnapping, racism, mental and physical torture, all kinds of violations of human rights. We must be aware that Jesus continues to suffer in our world today when people are persecuted, when injustice continues, when corruption is rewarded, and when unjust structures go on and on. Jesus' garments were pulled away for him, from him, and he was stripped when human people today are subject 
to shame and exploitation and abuse, Jesus is continued to be stripped. Whether through the media, where women are compelled to humiliate themselves, whether through on the streets where children are picking up crumbs to eat, it is wrong. Who are the guilty? Is it always them? We must admit that when we point a finger at others, we ourselves too have contributed to these forms of injustice, these forms of inhumanity. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we know that it is you who suffer when we cause pain to each other, when we remain indifferent. Your heart went out in compassion to the crowds. You said they were like sheep without a shepherd, lost and helpless. Give me eyes like you had to be sensitive to others and to know the needs of the poor and a heart that reaches out in fruitful service. Most of all, give me hope, give us hope. May we have zeal for your house burning within us to bring your joy and your hope to the lives of others. And we ask this prayer through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The seventh station. After Jesus is made an object of fun, he is led out to be crucified. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. The Meditation. Jesus, our Savior and Lord, at whose name every knee must bend and every tongue must proclaim him Lord, he's made into a laughing stock, an object of fun. We are shocked to see how human beings can ridicule their creator. To what levels of brutality human beings can sink. And today, in our world today, things that are very sacred, that are profound in our faith, are trivialized. The sense of the sacred, a respect for God, is allowed to erode. Religious sentiment is classified as unwelcome in our world today, in public life, persons, places, prayers, practices, sacred writings and religious formulas. They're all seen as irrelevant. Even people who once had a strong religious background can grow indifferent about the faith and others resentful toward the faith. <sighs> Momentous things like death, judgment, heaven and hell are so trivialized. And trivial things like fame, fortune, power, 
they're not trivialized, they're glorified. How did we get here? Jesus continues to be ridiculed. Let us pray. Lord, increase our faith. We believe. Help us to believe more. Help us to hold on firmly to the knowledge of who you are. May we never question or mock our faith. Spare us, O Lord, from becoming cynics. Allow us not to drift toward godlessness and enable us to experience your love and goodness in our ordinary life all our days. And we ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The Eighth Station. Jesus is helped by Simon of Cyrene to carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy cross you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. The soldiers led Jesus away, and as they were going, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, who was coming into the city from the country. They seized him put the cross on him, and made him carry it behind Jesus. The Meditation In Simon of Cyrene, we have a model of a man who is a faithful disciple, who steps up and takes on the cross to assist Jesus. He's a humble servant, and we thank God for the witness of many people that we know and Christians throughout the world who are humble servants. People of no glamor or sophistication, people with servants' hearts. This Simon of Cyrene, he reminds us of our duty to step up, to step up in the world as Christians, to step up to assist in the common good of humanity. It's time for some more deep-rootedness, some action. In Simon, we discover the holiness of ordinary people who roll up their sleeves. We learn to discover that greatness is found in small deeds of service. For the smallest acts of charity can be manifestations of God's love, his deep love for humanity. Ordinary service embraced willingly becomes extraordinary. Let us pray. Lord, it is your wonderful plan to lift up the lowly and to raise up the humble. Strengthen your church in her service. May the example of great saints like Mother Teresa of Calcutta and Don Bosco inspire us to dedicate our energy and our resources to step it up and to help especially those who are young, who are poor, who are the poorest of the poor. 
May one day we hear the voice of Jesus say to us, I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you came and you visited me. And I was, pri I was in prison and you were there for me. And we ask this prayer through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come. come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The ninth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. And there followed him a great multitude of the people, and of women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. The Meditation Jesus is self-forgetful. His anxiety is not about his own pain, his own crucifixion, his own suffering, but it's about the tragic future that awaits the next generation. Jesus worries about these women who greet him on the road. He prays for them and their children. What challenges children face in the future in this world? In this meditation, we think about the destiny of societies. We think about women and children. Whenever women are held in low esteem in a society, the society diminishes. Men are certainly to blame for doing that many times. And also women who allow themselves to be objectified and who follow some misguided cultural norms also make the situation more difficult. Men and women need to be responsible not to neglect the beauty of relationships in marriage and family life and the beautiful nurturing role that women have in society. There are many societies in the world where women are not given a fair shake and Christ must be weeping for them. And Christ is also weeping for societies that do not care for children. Wherever there is unconcern for the future through the trivialization of marriage and family life and the importance of children being raised with values and faith, Christ weeps at that neglect. And Jesus says, maybe to us today, do not weep for me, weep for yourselves and for your children. Let us pray. Lord, you're the master of history. Help all men and women to be responsible for the future of society. Renew in us the importance of family life 
be upholding, defending, and promoting the beauty and goodness of women, of marriage, of children, and of family. Arouse in us a truth for that in the world today and help us to step up to that responsibility that we may help build a future civilization of love. And we ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who Amen. art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The tenth station. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by your holy, holy cross, cross you have, have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. There they crucified him, and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching. But the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him vinegar and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Meditation The sufferings of Jesus reach a climax when he is nailed to the cross. He had stood fearlessly before Pilate. He endured the mistreatment of the Roman soldiers. He preserved his calm under the scourge and the crowning of thorns. On the cross itself, he seemed untouched by the insults hurled against him. He had no word of complaint nor desire to retort. And finally, hanging on the cross with his strength worn out, he cries out to the Father, 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 why have you abandoned me? Experience tells us too, this is Christ himself, and especially us, that when frustrations accumulate in our lives, and frustrations lead to anger, and anger leads to resentment. Things pile up. Sometimes we have bad news about our health, or bad news about family, or bad treatment from others. It all comes to a head. In such moments, we must remember that Jesus understands. He suffered too, and he cried out to the Father. May we also cry out to the Father, whose unfailing help can come and rescue us in our distress, the distress that we face in the crosses of life. Let us pray. 
Lord, when clouds gather on the horizon, when everything seems lost, and when we feel like falling into despair, when we find no friend who seems to be available to come to our help, and family too seems distracted, Lord, help us. Help us to trust you. Come to our aid. Heal us of our inner pain. Show us the way through the darkness. That in every act of pain and suffering, even our sins, that you have saved us and you will not leave us. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not. The 11th station, Jesus promises his kingdom to the good thief. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we, indeed, justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The meditation. In the case of Peter, it is a look of love. In the case of the good thief on the cross, it's the gaze that he gives on the suffering Christ. Conversion stories still exist, like the story of the repentant thief on the cross. There's lots of them. And they not only come when a person hits rock bottom, they come when a person gets a chance to stare into the face of Christ and he stares back at them. Conversion often is like a miracle. God opens our eyes and in that gaze, we recognize him and know that he recognizes and loves us. And then we surrender. If a person sometimes who has abandoned the faith can be given an opportunity to face Christ and feel that gaze, that person can come back to the love of God, which never left like uh, St. Thomas after the resurrection, after he messes up, says, my Lord and my God. Well, may we be an instrument to help people to get to that gaze of Christ. But may we ourselves never stop being in his presence and receiving that two-way transparent gaze with one another. Your face, O Lord, do I seek. 
hide not your face from me. Let us pray. Lord, we cry out, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, just as the repentant thief cried out. It is for your kingdom that we long. It is for our eternal home that we are destined. Help me, Lord, as I struggle ahead toward that destiny. Be the light in my darkness, the path that lights my way. May I focus on your face. Hide not your face from me. Lead me kindly, light in the encircling gloom. Lead on in the darkness. I know that I'm not far from home. Help me, Lord, keep my feet firm. Help me not to worry about looking too far ahead, but to take it one step at a time in your grace and in your love. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The Twelfth Station, the Mother of Jesus and the Beloved Disciple, St. John are at the foot of the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. The Meditation In suffering, we long for solidarity. Our Blessed Mother, Mother Mary, reminds us of her solidarity with her son Jesus and with the whole Christian family. And St. John reminds us of loyalty, the loyalty of a friend, that close band of friends, the apostles. Being there at the time of Jesus's need on the cross, family cohesion, bonds of friendship, very important for us in the nourishment of our soul and in society today, an anonymous society, relationships are not valued that much. It diminishes us as a human family. It diminishes us as as people. And then we have Mary at the cross. What an example she is for us. She is rooting Jesus on to complete his salvific mission. And she is encouraging him and giving him courage. She is our heavenly cheerleader par excellence. And so she's rooting us on to complete our journey. And then on the cross, our Lord looking down and telling Mother Mary, Behold your son, behold your sons and daughters, all of us, giving Mary that responsibility of being our mother, taking care of all of us. 
And then Jesus to St. John, behold your mother, reminding all of us that she's our mother and that we have a responsibility too to stay close to her, to respect her and to love her. Wow. Mary finally is an archetype of forgiveness. She doesn't hold resentment to the Jewish leaders or the Romans. She knows God's will be done. Forgiveness always prompts hope. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us your mother to be our mother. And thank you for her love for humanity, especially as our cheerleader in the journey of life. She, who stayed with you at your side in your sufferings, understands our sufferings and is accompanying us along the way. And Lord, help us to know your mother's love every day of our life and to honor and respect her until one day we're all together in heaven. And we ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen father forgive them for they know not what they do father forgive them for they know not what they do Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Thirteenth station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. The Meditation Jesus, in a loud voice, says, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Jesus hands over his life as he completes his salvific mission for all of humanity in total abandonment to the Father. May we too, at the moment of our death, hand over in total abandonment, all to the Father. May we, like our Lord Jesus, let go into the Father's hands. And even now, as we run the race and continue our journey, help us to strip ourselves of all attachment until one day we can let go at the end of our lives. And we also pray that Mother Mary accompany us at the moment of death. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you abandon yourselves to the salvific will of the Father. 
you abandon yourself on the cross for our salvation. Help us to let go and abandon our lives into yours. Forgive us our faults and help us to live our lives in your love. Christ be in me, Christ be within me. Christ be behind me, Christ be before me. Christ be beside me, Christ be to win me, to comfort me and restore me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The 14th station. Jesus is taken down from the cross and placed into the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark. Joseph bought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of rock. And he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. All tragedies make us ponder. A tsunami, an earthquake, a hurricane, the atomic bombs in Hiroshima, or Nagasaki. When death strikes, the reality of the other world, our eternal destiny, is brought close. Just look at COVID and the pandemic. It's a poignant example to us. It's a wake-up call. Our lives, precious. And it's an opportunity, these difficult tragedies that happen, for us to shed our illusions and to grasp hold of the deeper reality of our life. After Jesus left this world, the early church, the apostles, the early Christians, they got moving. They interpreted the message of Jesus to the ends of the earth. This message is not just that Jesus was a great guy, a wonderful philosopher, has an excellent teaching on relationships and forgiveness, but that Jesus is God and that Jesus himself is the way, the truth, and the life. And the reality is that Christ himself is our ultimate destiny. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, enable us to press forward on life's weary way and help us always to focus on our ultimate destiny. May all the challenges and tragedies that we face be opportunities for us to wake up. Help us, O oh Lord, in every day and in every way to see your hand in our lives. Help us not only to follow your teachings as if they were guidelines in a book, but to follow you in our lives and to open up our hearts to you, Jesus Christ. And we ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not. 